Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act Two with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. John, great to see you again. You know I'm a big fan, and you know that I am a denizen, an original denizen of Gotham, New York City, which is your haunt, mm -hmm. your playground, if you will, culinary oh, playground. I, I, I do haunt it sometimes. But... <laughs> <laughs> And I was very surprised to read in your uh, weekly newsletter, free newsletter to everybody at johnmariani.com, by the way, um, The Virtual Gourmet, that you reviewed the, uh, the food at the Lambs Club, a famous mm. theatrical club in New York City. Goes back to, what, 1860 or 1850, something like that. And interestingly enough, the Lambs Club was where I had my wedding reception after oh. getting married at St. Patrick's Cathedral many years ago. And, and I brought a little souvenir. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. It's that, a, this that, is a no, that is plate from the original Lambs Club. Florian Agne. Anyway, great place, famous place. But what's interesting for me, John, is... Not only did I have my wedding reception there, I was there when they went bankrupt, went out of business, and sold everything. Mm -hmm. hmm. So how do, I'm amazed. Of course, I'm not in New York for many, many years. I'm amazed that they opened up. It is it really the Lambs Club again, or is it just a name? Well, it's exactly the same place. Oh, the Lambs Club moved. Well, a little bit of history. First of all, the Lambs Club is nothing to do with their service of roast lamb or anything else with mint jelly. It has to do with Charles Lamb, who was a 19th century British romantic uh, essayist, best known for his dissertation on roast pig. And in 1874, long after he died, um, a group of four or five actors got together and said, let's have a club. And uh, they called it the Lambs Club, and it moved around the city. But the space that it is now <clears throat> was at one point uh, the original Lambs, Lambs Club, and it went through, you know, various closings and so forth. And the, the, there still is a Lambs Club of uh, where people just meet to talk about literary things. But as you said, it did go out of business and went bankrupt. Now it's 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 right at Times Square very busy nexus of uh, New York City. And um, it, the hotel itself went out. And then about, I would say about five years ago, uh, they renovated it and came back as uh, having the Lambs Club, a restaurant in there, which looked pretty nice uh, in, in many ways. Uh, I don't think it in any way replicated the exact Lambs Club as you would know it, or certainly not the original, but going back to the 19th century. Uh, but it went through a series of chefs, and it just never caught on. Um, so I was delighted to hear that the Chatwal Hotel a chain uh, took it over, and they really, if they didn't gut it, well, they, I mean, they had to keep all of the liniments and everything, liniments, uh, if they didn't gut it, they made it look just like a 1920s, roaring 20s, jazz age, 1930s swank uh, nightclub um, with uh, beautiful upholstery and uh, white tablecloths and, and uh, excellent glassware and a real New York sophisticated uh, spirit about it, which included up on the, up on the walls um, dozens and dozens and dozens of uh, New York writers. Um, because this was, everybody should know that uh, that nexus, uh, Times Square, and going uh, east was where all, not all, but many of the New York newspapers were located at that time. Yeah. Um, now we only have the Post, the Daily uh, News, and the New York Times, and the Wall Street Journal. I could go on. <laughs> the Village <laughs> Voice is gone. But, yeah. I mean, back in the, in the 1940s and 50s, you had the Journal American, you had the, you had the New York Mirror, you had, I mean, you just had probably a dozen papers, not to mention the uh, ethnic papers like the Irish Echo and Il Progresso and so yeah. forth, which yeah. service them. But those golden days are long gone. Um, but the pictures that you will see up on these uh, walls are of all these great journalists who once 
hung out there because, especially because it was very, very close to the New York Times and Daily News uh, offices at that time. So they renovated it, and I said, and as I said, it's the type of place where you expect um, uh, the madman from Madison Avenue going in and having three martini lunches. But what they did write uh, this time was that they brought in a chef um, finally, who the, the last chef they had was one of these guys who puts his name on the menu and then walks away and uh, really had very little to do do with it. And uh, but they hired a wonderful new chef whose name is uh, Jack Lorg, and he has long experience uh, in uh, New York, and he uh, is just doing wonderful, elegant food of uh, of a kind that. Uh, used to be um used to be part of new york history in other words all of the favorite old dishes that you have uh grown to love and also maybe food critics you say gets tired of like just a very good steak with french fries like a wonderful clam chowder like a pate like a shrimp cocktail all those things can still be had uh anywhere in in uh, New York and a lot of other places. <clears throat> but Lorgis has added a lot of finesse to it. Uh, perfectly seasoned tuna tartare and steak tartare. Just a nice little uh, hit of uh, horseradish, uh, creme fraiche, and a little caviar, American caviar on a baguette. They do, uh, when was the last time you saw Clams Casino? Um, mm, yeah. It's really, really nice with uh, white wine and panko breadcrumbs and perfectly chopped little neck clams. You don't want chewy big clams in it. Um, <clears throat> they do some crudo, which would be sashimi sort of thing. Um, they do a very good, if overstuffed hamburger. I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of a smash burger type of guy. I like my hamburgers to be like that, not like that, topped with cheese like that, topped with yeah. tomato like that, topped with other stuff like that, <laughs> two huge buns. Um, but if you like that sort of thing and you're willing to pay a, a great deal of money for it, um, they have it. Um, they have terrific desserts, including a chocolate mousse and caramel donut um, that you can't miss, um, a chocolate sundae uh, with popcorn ice cream, candied peanuts. Remember candied peanuts? What do they call it? In the box? Uh, peanut oh, uh, cracker jacks. Oh, oh. Cracker jacks. Cracker jacks. I still didn't hear you. Cracker Jacks with the Cracker, Cracker Jacks. Jacks. Cracker Jacks. You get the uh, sailor on the front. Little prize. Yeah. You get the little prize in there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, for all those reasons, it's now a good time to go back. And if, like you, John, have a history there, uh, you're going to go back and you're going to say, well, this is not how I remembered it, but you'll say, oh, this is now a wonderful restaurant that bespeaks New York sophistication and yeah. chic, and the food's as good as uh, any in town. Um, and as I said, refined, a little bit of finesse, um, very, very good wine list, expensive wine list. And the prices in the place are about what you find in any other similar restaurant. Uh, most entree prices, main courses are in the 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. uh, the order of steak is going to be 50 or more. Sure. But um, generous portions, um, very good service by a, a wise swath of uh, ethnics from, from Albania and Serbia and uh, <laughs> black waiters, uh, oriental, oh, you can't say oriental anymore, Asian waiters and so forth, um, a beautiful hostess uh, at the front door who receives you cordially. It's, uh, it's a wonderful place to go, so I'm glad it's back. So next time, when you are coming in at the end of the month, uh, John, so maybe you should go there. I, you know what? I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I know it won't be the same. Um, and quite frankly, when um, in my heyday uh, in New York, uh, the Lambs Club was really a theatrical club. Mm -hmm. A lot of actors, it was close to Broadway. Right. Um, and a lot of actors for, you know, almost a century would live there either temporarily or between gigs or whatever. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Actors doing a Broadway show might stay over one or two nights a week, that kind of thing. Um it was a it was a really popular place, but it had seen its better days. Its glory days were behind it, but it was the epitome of what we think of as a British men's club, mm -hmm. um, and it had a great bar. I will tell you that you could meet some great people at that bar. Yeah. <laughs> was there so it's good that it's back. Um, the restaurant at the Lambs Club was good. It was never great. It was what kind of what you describe now, but not. 
at that high and exalted level. Um, it was a good, solid uh, men's club menu, New York, uh, you know, steak and potatoes kind of menu. Uh, but it was it was great. You could always count on it. You know, that also, kind of also by the way, I I, uh, I don't think I've ever eaten at the Labs Club. I might have, but I don't remember. But uh, in the '60s, uh, when Times Square was a lot more tawdry, uh, and uh, in fact, I went to uh, one New Year's Eve there once uh, before they uh, had to. Uh, uh, batten down the uh, the uh, sewer uh, covers and things like that. Yeah. It was a more open time. Uh, but I do remember, and I'm glad that you uh, brought it up, uh, John, that the um, Daily Planet, I think, was uh, fashioned after the lobby of, what, the Daily News on yeah. 42nd Street, yeah. which is just yeah. on the block from there. So for anybody visiting New York, first of all, Times Square is no longer that tawdry look that has this reputation like in uh what was it uh, urban cowboy or midnight cowboy whatever it was uh it's uh, a lot more cleaned up it's got a lot of disney stuff down there and they fixed it up so it's really a nice place to go take a look uh and and um uh and go visit the daily planet uh, uh of superman fame when you say the daily planet there's a restaurant called the daily planet isn't no there? no i'm talking about the lobby if you look in the lobby of uh, what is the daily news building or at least yeah the daily news that. building is 42nd and first street right right yeah uh, yeah but it's I, not I, you know it's an easy walk right. and uh, and you're right that's that was the uh, template for uh, but, but john i i loved hearing about the newspaper um, and the journalist aspect for mm. uh, that they've incorporated because you're right. Uh, my dad was a newspaper man, and I'm telling you, there were two dozen newspapers in New York City every day. Absolutely, you didn't know what to read. So, thank you. Uh, good trip back memory lane and updating to a current restaurant, which I am definitely going to try. I hope so. Yeah. I, by the way, John, don't forget to fill in your plate collection. Yes, I'll steal the silverware next time I go there and send it out to you, Art. Uh, it's a deal. Thanks. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.